Ahead of the biggest tournament since the Australian Open, Indian Wells, we have some big changes to the rankings and also some big results coming through Acapulco in Dubai. Of course, two of the biggest events on the ATP since the Australian Open. And the seeds are locked in as well to Indian Wells. Let's have a look at who won last week in both the ATP and the WTA. So starting on the ATP this time, we have the Dubai Championships and Ugo Bear taking out Bublik in the finals, 6-4, 6-3, and he got a big boost to the rankings and also a big boost to the race of the finals, which we'll find out soon. Over in Acapulco, we had Dimonor winning back-to-back -back at that tournament, beating Rude in the finals, 6-4, 6-4. He also beat City Pass along the way, so really good week for Alex Dimonor yet again. And over in Chile, on the clay, we had Baez beating Tabillo, 3-6, 6-love, 6-4, to win another trophy on the clay courts and he won the golden swing if anybody won the golden swing it was him winning two out of the four titles on the clay watch out for him when we actually get to the european clay in about a month's time heading over to the wta now and at the san diego open we had bolter taking out kostruk 5-7-6-2-6-2 to lift the biggest trophy of her career and over in austin we had yuan taking out wong 6-4-7-6 in an all chinese final and chinese players are doing really well at the moment of course zhang being the best of them so really interesting to see how that progresses and how China progresses over the next couple of months. They're doing so well in tennis at the moment. Having a look at the players outside the top 10 that have gone up in the rankings this week, Umbea. He's gone up four spots to a career high number 14 in the world after winning the biggest trophy of his career in Dubai. Katie Boulder, she's gone up 22 spots to number 27 in the world after winning in San Diego, a massive 500 points to her total. So she's really rising up the ranks. And Yuan goes up 19 spots into the top 50 for the first time after winning in Austin, coming in number 49. So some big career high rankings for the winners of last week. Players that went down in the rankings outside the top 10, Tommy Paul. He's gone down three spots to number 17 in the world after failing to defend the points that he made from the final of Acapulco last year. Danielle Collins, she goes down eight spots to number 56 in the world after losing a lot of points from this time last year. And Gracheba, she's gone down 13 spots to number 68 in the world after losing all the points from making it to the final of Austin last year. So some players there that couldn't replicate their results from 12 months ago, dropping down the ranks. All right, taking a look at the top 10 for the WTA and there was no changes. Only one player played last week and that was Pagula. So we have Shriontek. She stays at number one with Sabalenka at number two. Goff at number three and Rabakina at number four. And that'll be the top four going into Indian Wells in a week's time. So we'll find out with the draw in a couple of days where those players lie. Pagula, she stays at five with Jabur at number six. Wondrusa at seven. Zhang at eight. Zachary at 9 and Ostapenko rounds out the top 10 for this week but of course with Indian Wells coming up a lot of points up for grabs a lot of points for the top players to defend because of course Sabalenka, Sviantec, Rabakina did really well there last year so we could see some dramatic changes the next time we see the rankings update after Indian Wells. Checking out the race of the finals now. And again, not too many changes with Sabalenka staying at number one. Rabakina at two. Fiontek at three and Jung at four. Ostapenko's at five with Paulini at six. Goff at number seven. Kalinskaya at number eight. Yastremska stays at number nine. And Pavlyuchenkova at number 10 in the race of the finals. And again, not many of those players played. So that's why there wasn't much of a change. But with Indian Wells, it's going to be huge. The 1,000 points going to somebody in the WTA after that tournament and it could really shake up this race of the finals. Going over to the men's side of things, and again, not really any changes to the top of the tree with Djokovic at number one and Elkaraz at number two, Sinner at three and Medvedev at four. And of course, those four guys are locked in as the top four seeds for Indian Wells. Zverev, he goes up one spot to number five in the world after Rublev got defaulted from Dubai and lost all his points. So not only did he lose the prize money from the tournament, which is about $150,000, all the points from the event also maybe lost some respect from some of the tennis fans as, as well. He also lost his number five ranking, Rublev. So it was a hell of a week for him. Very bad week for him. He's at number six. Runa, he stays at number seven with her catch at number eight. But Kasper Ruud, he's back into the top 10 after a couple of months of being out of the top 10. He goes up to number nine after making the final of Acapulco with Dimonor getting pushed down to number 10. Despite defending the title, wasn't enough to keep Ruud behind him. And that pushes Fritz totally out of the top 10 after he failed to defend those points from Acapulco last year. So we're starting to get a little bit of change there. And of course, with Indian Wells coming up, Expect more changes in a few weeks. Having a look at the race of the finals here, and nothing changes at the top with Sinner at one and Medvedev at number two. But Alex Dimonor, after adding another 500 points to his total, he's at number three in the race of the finals, going up three spots higher than last week, pushing Zverev down to number four. Baez, so he goes up to number five. And also the Dubai champion, Umber, going up 12 spots to number six. So all the champions of last week really getting a boost up the ranks. Those guys pushing Djokovic down number seven and Rublev down to number eight. So both losing three spots than last week. Her catch. 
he stays there at number nine. And Bublik making the final of Dubai. He jumps into the top 10 for the first time, seven spots higher than last week, pushing the likes of Dimitrov and Fritz completely out of the top 10 for the race of the finals this week. So some real big changes and a lot of points up for grabs. And the players that win the titles, they get the benefits. And with Indian Wells, again, be a massive shakeup in a couple weeks' time. So there it is. That is the rankings. And it's starting to look really interesting with that race of the finals. Some big names and some trophy winners getting those points and, and getting those boosts up the rankings. You know, the guys that didn't play in February didn't get those points. Djokovic, for example, didn't play at all. And he's been pushed down to number seven in that race of the finals. But he is playing in Indian Wells and he is also playing in Miami. So I'm sure Djokovic will add to those points pretty quickly. And those tournaments are going to be huge, especially for the women as well. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the most shocking part of the rankings for you this week? Is it the fact that some of the players that have dropped down in the rankings this week, are you surprised at some of the results that have happened? Or maybe are you excited about the players that are getting boosted up the rankings? Of course, still no one-handed backhand in the top 10 for the men or the women. So three weeks in a row, we haven't had a one-handed backhand, which of course never had happened three weeks ago. And for the first time it has, there's the rankings for another week. Indian Wells coming up. It's going to be huge to see what happens after that.